Maker, stylist and author Lisa O'Neill wants you to have a big, beautiful life, to forget the housework and do what you want and start loving yourself. And she has written the recipe in her new book, Juggling in High Heels, How to Organise Chaos. Welcome to the cafe, Lisa. Yay! Now, I think before we get started, let's just let's just talk about what you've got going on at home, so people know what you are actually juggling. Uh, you have got four children, yep. all of whom have got uh, they're all celiac. Three of whom have suffered from type one diabetes. Yeah, I there's mean, a bit going on. That's a lot going on <laughs> in one family, an awful yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah. And, and what ages are they? 17, 15, 13 and 9. <laughs> oh, fun. Once again, I remembered. <laughs> also a lot going on. I mean, that's an extraordinarily busy family you've got there. Yeah, it is busy, but it's always busy. I don't think it matters if you've got one or five. My grandmother had, like, eight, and she said after three, they raised themselves. <laughs> <laughs> what made you, Lise, want to write this book? I spent 25 years dressing women, so I spent 25 years in the fashion industry, and I was all these unhappy women, right. and they weren't in charge of their stuff. And they're like, oh, my life's really bad. And I'm like, who's in charge of that? And they were like, oh, and then they'd leave. So <laughs> I thought we should fix that, really. And so you've written this book. So you've got all your stuff going on at home. And you're also travelling around the country, helping out other women. And you're helping everyone organise their chaos. So what is in this book? I mean, what are the different p parts of it? So really, it's just a whole pile of different items that sort of give you tips to get through everyday stuff like it's because I think first of all you've got to identify that you have got chaos because yeah. we're all running around pretending to have the Facebook life going it's amazing yeah look at my Instagram look at my story birthday. it's yeah. so, look at the birthday so party yeah. and instead of actually really going actually this is a shambles and what am I going to do about it and I think it's really about being in charge what do you think is holding women back from doing what they love I mean clearly family's a big one but is there anything else you've identified whilst putting this book together yeah, they don't put themselves first. And women have been traditionally raised to kind of do everything for everyone. Mm -hmm. So it's all about, oh, how can I, you know, be more in service to everyone? And they forget themselves. And then they end up bitter and grumpy and resentful. And then their kids are, don't like them. Because mm -hmm. no one wants a grumpy mother, right? No, and no one wants to be a grumpy mother either. I really like what you've some done do. in this book. <laughs> I think some love it. <laughs> oh, oh. Some make it their mission every day. Yeah, they do. Well, mm -hmm. those ones, I know the ones too. The, on the PTA, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> um, I like what you've done at the beginning of this book where you're talking about doing the juggle because we often as women don't really factor in what we are juggling and you've got some certain questions here that you think we should go through on a almost on a weekly basis we should ask ourselves yeah, these I questions. Think that's really important because you, you need to do a constant assessment like my week changes my day every day is different for me and the top priority is different every day. So, so what should we ask ourselves? What's kind of like how's it going what's going well what's terrible what's really big that's coming up because we often wake up and go Ugh, it's today and there's no planning and I think planning's really like if I didn't have my lists I would self combust. Mm. You describe this as thoughtful self-evaluation, would that be correct? <laughs> yeah. yeah I think so, I think just constantly evaluating how things are going and we don't do that and then you wake up and go oh that was a terrible two years, it's like it'd be easier if you just went that was a bad three days. Okay so but, um, am amongst all the chaos though I guess what would be the first step to trying to even find time to read something in here? You've got to make time right like the time fairy is not coming anytime soon. You've got to actually make time. And women say to me all the time, I don't have time. How do you have time to write a book? I don't do housework, right? I don't, I, I don't spend a lot of time. I don't watch TV in the evenings. I spend a lot of time reading. I do a lot of writing. Mm -hmm. You know, doing what stuff's important. I, I want to come back and ask you in a moment about um, the, the bit that you've got on relationships and the love of your life because that is pretty fascinating stuff and I think it's something that we could all probably learn quite a lot for, uh, a lot from actually, Lisa and Neil. Yeah. Okay, cool. We'll come back straight after this more about this book and also it's not all perfect. Sometimes Lisa does have fails, so that'll be addressed <laughs> straight after this. <laughs> Well, in the Harvey Norman Lounge this morning, we are very lucky to be joined by author of Juggling in High Heels, Lisa O'Neill. Now, Lisa, I want to ask you about relationships because you've got a segment in the book called The Love of Your Life. And you have two questions at the top that we should be asking our partners or asking ourselves about our partners. How much time do I spend with my partner? Mm -hmm. And what does my partner need from me? It's funny because it seems very simple, but most of us don't ask those simple questions, do we? No, and it's really easy. By the time you get a whole lot of kids in the mix, it just becomes this kind of mess of domesticity where you're just doing washing and putting the rubbish out and you actually haven't connected or talked to each other or found out what 
what floats your boat, what's mm. working, what's not. You have to really remember to do nice things to each other or speak nicely to each other as just well, don't do, you? Just be nice because <laughs> it's like they're supposed to be your, your one and only and you go from being madly in love to going, did you not remember to do that? And it just becomes this Who ugly... Who used my razor? Exactly. Yeah, it just <laughs> becomes this ugly kind of exchange of ugliness and I think it's a real shame. I think you need to honour your partner more. Mm. Good Life's for kids to see that. that too, right? Mm. And, and yeah. something I, I love about you too, Lisa, is that you do a lot of motivational speaking. I guess you try and break the routine of the norm for people to try and get them in that right space. It must hey, be a very hey. empowering job. What sort of feedback have you had, you know, based on the book and your speaking circuits? What, what are some of the success stories? Oh, it's just so much fun. It's such an honour to actually be speaking to groups of people and get them excited and um, I had a gorgeous woman who came to one of my events who said I was emotionally nutritious which was very oh, cute. Gosh. I'd put that a quote in the back of the book of <laughs> yeah. you. Emotionally nutritious which I thought was really lovely mm. and because I have a lot of energy and I love to share that with people and it's just about winding people up and giving them that moment to go so what are you going to do about it and they're like and is that what we do? Do we just forget to take time out for ourselves sometimes? Yeah we do, we just forget to do the important stuff and we spend all this time vacuuming. Mm. <laughs> and no one's got time to vacuum. Yeah, boring. I can yeah. tell you that. So that's some of your success stories. Tell us about some of your big. Because I mean, obviously, as you said, not that everything can be successful. What have been? What, what's been one of your big fails? Oh God, big fail. Oh, I don't know what a big fail is. I mean, I think it's failures every day. Mm. Where you know you forget to turn up to the school assembly. Oh. You, you know, there's just all that stuff with. There's constantly stuff going on in our house, and it's like, oh, I forgot to do that, and I forgot to, you know, fill in the form for this, and I, I think there's just constant fails. But you keep organising. You say you talk about your lists as well. Yeah. How do you organise, for example, school notices? Because you must be getting an awful lot of those coming in. Yeah, a lot of that. We just have a wee file, and my husband's really good at that. Fantastically, he's amazing at that stuff. And so. And because I'm away a lot, I kind of default back to him a little bit, which is really good. But it's just about keeping that stuff, making sure you know what's going on. Mm. And so we do a term, or I do a term plan and a monthly plan, so I've got, I know what each kid's up to at each time. And, you know, a lot of teenagers in your family, so, so time <laughs> is precious. Do you have any rules when it comes to, I don't know, do you have a certain night where you want to sit down and have a meal together? No cell phones at the table? How do you No, nah, we've all tried that? all that. It just doesn't work. Right. And, and I just think it doesn't work. It's just, we tried all that. We're like forced family fun. That's um, why yeah. she's successful, just, folks. She's a realist. <laughs> yeah, very, you've got to be really real. And I can't get a night sometimes where they're all at the same place. So it's right. about having individual time and checking in individually I think because my guys have all got such different needs now so one wants to do Lego one's got you know NCEA it's different different horses for different courses mm -hmm. and, and for people watching now you should go and get her book by the way but what's one piece of advice you could give them to start that journey on making sure their life is organized yeah I just think actually have a meeting with yourself so I have two meetings with myself a week I have catering, of wine, a little meeting, <laughs> and just have a little planning session on your own. It's so, key. Lisa, what are you up to? Well, Lisa, actually, yeah, I've written exactly a list what about I do. Oh, really? That's exactly what Good. I do. So I write down questions and then I answer them. What's going well? Not a lot. I would love to be a fly in the wall. <laughs> you can come meetings. to my next meeting. Yeah, I can. <laughs> that would be great. Oh, that this sounds cool. awesome, doesn't it? Yeah. Nice work. Yeah, a really much, beautiful Lisa. book too and beautiful to look at and a whole lot of really good little you know, bits and pieces that we can just dip in and out of and feel quite positive about ourselves, which is what life is all about. Yeah, point, right? yeah what's your favourite chapter before you go? Oh, I think Big Elephants. Yes. There's a whole chapter about big elephants, having someone, a mentor or someone who you can look up to and I think having a big elephant is really important. Everybody needs a big elephant. Big Lisa, elephant. thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Lisa's book, Juggling in High Heels, How to Organise Chaos, is out now from all good bookstores. Isn't it beautiful? And you are a fantastic, energetic, vibrant person. Thank you so much for thank coming. Thank you. Lisa. Thank you so really much. really enjoyed that.